Another Boeing delay, 777X won't arrive until 2027. What if I told you that Boeing's newest aircraft, supposed to revolutionize long-haul flying, just got delayed for the sixth time? And we're now looking at 2027 for first delivery. If you care about aviation and want to understand why the industry's biggest stories matter, subscribe. Today we're diving into one of the most catastrophic program delays in aerospace history and what it reveals about how Boeing broke. The announcement nobody wanted to hear. October 2025. Boeing CEO Kelly Ortberg stood before investors and essentially admitted the company is drowning. The 777X, the aircraft supposed to be flying by 2020, won't arrive until 2027. That's seven years late, seven years behind the original schedule for a program that cost over $11 billion in overruns alone. Think about that for a moment. $11 billion. That's roughly equivalent to the entire development cost of the Airbus A350, an aircraft that launched later, completed development faster, entered service earlier, and is now dominating the wide-body market because Boeing's aircraft still doesn't exist. But here's what's truly shocking. Nobody was really surprised. The airlines ordering these aircraft have already stopped waiting. Emirates, which holds 200 of five of the 565 orders, that's 41% of the entire order book, has essentially given up. Their president, Tim Clark, spent three years demanding accountability. By 2024, he stopped even bothering. Can Boeing give us concrete assurances the dates will be fixed? He asked in June. No, they can't. That's surrender dressed as candor. How we got here, the timeline nobody should ignore. November 17th, 2013, Dubai Air Show. This was supposed to be Boeing's triumph, the largest commercial aircraft launch in history by dollar value. 259 orders, $95 billion. Emirates committed to 150 aircraft. Qatar Airways ordered 50, Lufthansa signed for 34. The 777X was going to be everything the aviation industry wanted. Radical new engines, composite wings spanning 235 feet with revolutionary folding wingtips, cabins inspired by the revolutionary 787, and 12% better fuel efficiency than anything existing. First flight, mid-2019. Entry into service, 2020. Lufthansa would be the launch customer. Passengers would be flying in 2019. Then the delays started. In 2019, GE9X engine compressor issues pushed first flight to January 2020, already six months late. The aircraft finally flew on January 25, 2020, after complications that nobody publicly detailed. By January 2021, Boeing had taken a $6.5 billion charge and admitted first delivery was slipping till late 2023. By April 2022, it was 2025. By October 2024, after a serious engine problem discovered during flight testing, it became 2026. Then, October 2025, 2027, six announcements. Six times the industry watched Boeing move the goalpost. This isn't mismanagement, this is catastrophe. The engineering failures that keep revealing themselves. Here's something that will terrify anyone who understands aviation. In September 2019, during a structural test with FAA inspectors present, the 777X test airframe suffered catastrophic failure at 99% of its design load limit. 99%. The fuselage ruptured. A passenger door was completely blown off the aircraft and fell to the factory floor. The test airframe became a total loss. Because the failure happened so close to the target, Boeing avoided a complete retest, but the incident foreshadowed everything that would follow. Then came the engine problem. The GE-9X, the largest commercial aircraft engine ever built at 134 inches in diameter, discovered failing compressor vanes during certification testing. That delayed first flight by half a year right there. October 2022 brought another engine issue that grounded the entire test fleet for two months when a temperature sensor failed. But the most serious incident came on August 15, 2024. Inspectors found a completely severed thrust link on test aircraft and 777-9XY. These are heavy titanium structures connecting engines to the wing pylon. They transfer 115,000 pounds of thrust during flight. The link was severed. Inspections of the other test aircraft revealed cracks. 
The Discovery grounded all test flights for five months while Boeing and GE redesigned the entire engine attachment system. Five months. That's how long it took to address a structural failure that somehow went undetected through earlier testing. Then there was what the FAA called the Uncommanded Pitch Event. December 8, 2020. During a test flight, the 777X's nose pitched up without the pilots doing anything. Just pitched up by itself. If this sounds familiar, it should. The 737 MAX had an uncommanded pitch system, MCAS, that crashed twice, killing 346 people. The FAA's May 2021 letter denying certification explicitly stated, this incident should have never happened and it cannot happen again. Why this matters to the airlines waiting. Emirates is the story here. One airline is sitting on 41% of the order book. One airline has been essentially held hostage by Boeing's incompetence for 12 years. Tim Clark tried patience. He demanded accountability. He eventually got angry in public, something industry leaders rarely do. None of it mattered. So what did Emirates do? They spent $4 billion refurbishing their existing fleet. New seats, new entertainment systems, new cabin features. They watched the 777X not arrive year after year, so they improved what they already had. Then, after eight years of waiting for the 777X cabin design to debut, they scrapped the entire plan and lost 20 to 30 million euros in the process. They had to install their premium interiors on other aircraft instead. Lufthansa, the designated launch customer, developed an entire premium cabin concept called Allegris, specifically for the 777X, first class, business class all designed around this aircraft that was supposed to arrive in 2020. 1,400 pages of documentation. The company spent millions. When the 777X never arrived, Lufthansa retrofitted existing A350s with the Allegris cabin instead. They had to abandon the competitive advantage they spent years designing. Singapore Airlines took 41 A350s and retrofitted them with the first-class cabin originally intended for the 777X. The retrofits run through 2030. They've essentially written off the 777X as a near-term product. Cathay Pacific attempted to cancel its entire order in 2020. Qatar Airways is still waiting for the 777-8F freighter variant, ordered in January 2022, now not expected until 2028. Six years from order to delivery. The order book shows 565 aircraft, but 118 of those have been reclassified as uncertain by Boeing's own accounting standards. That's 21% of orders in accounting limbo. In 2021, 118 orders were moved to this uncertain category. In January 2025, Boeing moved another 38 orders to uncertain status. The order book is deteriorating, not growing. The broader collapse. What we're watching isn't just a delayed aircraft. We're watching the breakdown of Boeing as an engineering organization. The 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019 killed 346 people. The January 2024 door plug blowout on a 737 MAX 9 revealed four bolts completely missing. Completely missing. FAA audits found Boeing failed 37% of its quality control check. 37%. The regulatory relationship has fundamentally changed. The FAA used to delegate certification authority to Boeing through a system called Organization Designation Authorization. Postmax, that authority was dramatically curtailed. Every Boeing program now faces heightened FAA scrutiny, extended review periods, comprehensive documentation demands. The days of Boeing being able to simply tell the FAA just trust us are gone. The 777X arrived in this environment. It's not actually a derivative of the original 777. Boeing claimed it was to reduce certification burden. But EASA rejected this approach in 2021. The folding wingtips alone, a first ever feature on a commercial aircraft, required the FAA to develop new certification conditions from scratch. The new avionics systems required complete review. The composite wings required full scrutiny. The aircraft that was supposed to be a fast derivative became a nearly complete new type facing the full certification gauntlet. The Airbus Advantage While Boeing delayed, Airbus launched the A350 in December 2006 and put it in service January 2015. Eight years. Two years of delays from the original target. The A350 has been flying for a decade now. 
1,445 total orders from 62 customers. 675 aircraft delivered to 38 operators as of mid-2025. 99.3% operational reliability. In 2023, Airbus sold 300 A350s, the most ever sold in a single year. The aircraft that Boeing could have directly competed with entered service while the 777X was still in design phase. Now the A350 owns the market. Airlines have adapted their fleet plans around the 777X absence. They're ordering A350s for routes where they would have ordered 777Xs. When the 777X finally arrives in 2027, it will enter a market where the competition has already been flying for 12 years operating successfully on every major long-haul route, and gaining fleet lock-in advantages in training, maintenance, and spare parts. Qantas chose the A350-1000 over the 777X for Project Sunrise Ultra Long Haul routes from Australia to London. That's a high-profile rejection that signals the aviation industry's confidence has shifted. The Financial Devastation The 777X has accumulated over $11 billion in overruns. This latest 2027 delay is expected to add another 2.5 to $4 billion. The program is in what's called a reach forward loss position, meaning Boeing won't recover development costs even after selling 500 aircraft. Total program losses could approach 15 to $20 billion when including all charges and opportunity costs. That's roughly equivalent to building two entire new aircraft from scratch. What this means going forward, the wide-body market faces a production shortfall of approximately 300 aircraft over the next two decades. 1,000 aging wide-bodies need replacement in the next 15 years. The 777X was supposed to fill that gap. But during the 12-year absence, production expectations have shifted. The market now favors mid-size wide-bodies like the A350-900 over very large aircraft. If the 777X finally arrives in 2027 without further delays, it could capture significant replacement market share. But that's a massive conditional. The aircraft must prove its promised fuel efficiency. The engines must prove reliable. The folding wingtips must work flawlessly. Boeing must restore quality credibility. Multiple conditions have to align perfectly. The pessimistic scenario is equally plausible. Customer concentration creates existential risk. Emirates holds 41% of orders. If they significantly reduce their commitment, the program becomes commercially unviable. No U.S. carrier has ordered the passenger variant. Only freighter interest exists from North American Airlines. The program is heavily dependent on Middle East carriers continuing their commitment despite years of broken promises. The deeper failure. Boeing didn't accidentally stumble into this situation. The company made strategic decisions over decades that created this outcome. The McDonnell Douglas merger brought a cost-cutting culture. The headquarters moved to Chicago separated executives from engineering. Leadership prioritized short-term shareholder value over engineering excellence. The 737 MAX shortcuts proved profitable until they didn't. The organizational culture that enabled MAX Corners was the same culture attempting the 777X. The 777X launch was defensible in 2013, but execution failures and unforeseen circumstances transformed it into perhaps the most troubled wide-body program in history. Boeing had market demand but lacked organizational health to execute. Closing As we wait for the 777X to finally arrive, assuming 2027 becomes real and not another delay, the aviation industry is watching something larger unfold. This is about whether Boeing can remain a viable competitor in wide-body aviation or whether Airbus will own the market for the next generation. The answer won't arrive in 2027. It's already here. The answer is that Boeing broke and the industry has already moved on. If you're interested in how these massive stories reshape aviation, subscribe for more analysis that goes beyond the headlines.